first of all, I, I think what Cindy and Sean have said today have clarified something in my mind that's been sort of rattling around a little bit. And it's what Beck and Pam Mulhall and, and, and Mandy and I, as the sort of Monash team, I, I think pushed us to where we ended up with PCK. Whatever the, the thing is that we can look at and measure, I think that's just content knowledge. And one of the things about that content knowledge is how teachers conceptualise it. And being topic specific means there are some ways SUNY had there about indispensable PCK. I think it's probably indispensable ways of conceptualising a topic. And so our notion in cause of big ideas sits at the heart of how you can conceptualise a topic. And there may be three or four or five different indispensable ways of doing it, but a teacher has a way. And then the PCK is how they work with those ideas in trying to enhance their students' learning of it. So that diagram that SUNY had sort of started to make sense to me, and then what Sean was just doing there was showing, you can measure subject matter knowledge propositionally, but it becomes really awkward when you start trying to work out how it can be interpreted differently. So those two things are a little bit of a breakthrough in my thinking. The other thing is our group, for a long time, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just finding ways into what we thought expert science teachers did. And so these questions have become interesting to us because I keep going back to the definition we have of PCK, teaching a particular topic in a particular way with a particular group of students for a particular reason. For us... That's a strong enough definition of PCK without worrying about how you measure, capture, define every single aspect of it. So if I, if I do something, and those of you who, who know us as a team, this is very unusual that we would have to answer the questions. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we've tried to do. So that first one, how do we develop robust, well-designed instruments and protocols for assessing PCK? Well, for us, and here's where context matters. We're not in the world where standards and, and pressures to measure have yet ruined our life. <laughs> okay. They're coming. They're coming, but they're not yet there yet. Therefore, our whole research approach hasn't been pushed by that imperative. And it makes a big difference then to what you do. Our efforts really were based on the fact that Mandy in particular came to Monash having been a very successful teacher and then what we termed teacher researcher. And we were all caught by the notion that a whole lot of things around teacher research meant that we knew a lot of problems or issues about science teaching, but we knew very little about what to do about it. And so one of the things about PCK that was very important to us was driven by a paper that Mandy and Pip had done when they had unpacked a whole lot of stuff on alternative conceptions and then said, now what happens? And the answer was, we don't know and the literature doesn't help us. And so for us, it was a driver of the getting into PCK because we go, PCK is a really cool idea, it's seductive, as researchers, we all love it. But what does it mean for a teacher and how can it be concrete? So that's what we started with. How do you make it concrete? Because we want it to be valuable for teachers. Otherwise, it was just a game for all of us as researchers. And then the last part of that is, as that sort of started to work out, and, and we came up over years with the core and paper ideas, then we were confronted by the fact that what we thought we did and why was taken completely different by teachers. And they took the ideas, they, they worked, they resonated with them and all that sort of thing. They just didn't use them the way we anticipated they did something different. And again, that was an eye-opener for us. And in fact, although I've got here that they ignored papers, they liked papers to read, they just didn't want to make them up. Because they know what we do, why do I need to write it? But they loved reading them. And then the last thing, the notion of assessment, I think is really interesting. So from our perspective, we are still, we were working at a descriptive level, not a prescriptive level. It's really important. And so purpose, purpose, purpose drives the work. Um, in the end, and this is 
crucial to however you read clause and papers. The whole lot is a package, is what we call PCK. Taking any one bit out it isn't PCK. That's why PCK for us is so hard to measure. Um, criteria to comprehensively judge various instrumentation and protocols. You could play with um, papers and cause and sort of say cores are content <coughs> knowledge and papers are pedagogical knowledge. You could. But there's another layer on it. There's a whole layer of interpretation and working with. It's not quite so easy um, to measure. Um, the, the core is a terrific protocol. When you put that down with a group of science teachers, it changes how they talk and what they think about. I'm not sure that it's a, an instrument for measurement, but it is a very good protocol. And one of the reasons it's a good protocol is all of a sudden the notion of big ideas means teachers think very differently about how they understand the curriculum content in that topic. Because most of them don't think in big ideas, they think in chapters of a book. Okay? So it's a, it's a really interesting thing. Um, our idea then, of course, is that the cause sort of play with the content and the papers are windows into how that content might be used or, or, or enacted in, in different ways. Uh, one of the things about it is there is a difference between individuals and groups. All of this work is really, really hard to do as an individual, really hard to do. And we know that in the team because when we were working in content areas that we're not expert at, we really struggled, really struggled. And so the, the topic specificity is a huge deal, huge deal. Applying these things, mm, as you, anyone who's familiar with our cause and papers, there's not a correct set of them. But there are some that resonate differently with different groups. And if I go to the chemical reactions, when we were first doing that, we had a lot of trouble with it because none of us are chemists. And all of the information that we're getting, we couldn't, we couldn't make sense, we couldn't analyse and put it together until we realised there were two different worldviews of chemical reactions. Once we worked out that, then it all started to fall back into place. So as a, an instrument, it worked, right, it worked really well. We didn't have the content knowledge to understand these different worldviews. So that becomes another interesting issue. How many worldviews are there and how correct they are? Mm, they become interesting. Um, benefits of uniformity? Well, benefits for whom is a big deal. And I'll say something really contradictory here. Education suffers from the fact that we are, unfortunately, often <coughs> lacking in some sort of specificity or, or uniformity. And I've said this example a number of times. Reflection was a really cool idea that became whatever you wanted it to be. And sadly, in education, we tend to do that. And I, and here's how we work arguments, I think that's unfortunate, and yet I'm actually saying the same thing about PCK. We have this really difficult thing that we want things to be specific and clear and held in a box and be able to be used in an appropriate way. At the same time, we also want it to be something else. Now, PCK has got all of us in a really interesting spin because we do want to be able to say what it is, but perhaps we want to use it in a whole lot of different ways. Hence, I go back to a particular topic in a particular way with a particular group of students for a particular reason. Okay. Um, common understandings, I think common understandings are fantastic. I'm developing some common understandings from the presentations I'm hearing and the discussions I've had, I'm having. I'm not sure that my egotistical view of our work is changing, but the, the common understandings are getting stronger because of one really important thing about this summit, Julie, thank you so much for this. One of the really important things is, as you hear different perspectives from the people and you get to know them, you see their work differently. That's really important. Our work is based on relationships. 
This sort of thing changes reading a paper, reading a book, getting an idea. Knowing the people changes things. I feel that enormously privileged. Our team feels enormously privileged to have the opportunity to be here. Uh, here's a big thing. This is one of Mandy's great mantras in life. Teaching is problematic. And if you don't view it that way, then we are all about the delivery of propositional knowledge. PCK, you have to see as problematic. There are multiple choices able to be made. Trying to find out what they are is what our, our, our sort of difficulty is as researchers. We see a, a, a huge difference between individual and collective. I don't know whether that's canonical and personal or idiosyncratic. I think it's got a lot to do with how much you're able to bring out when you're the only person doing the thinking and talking. So individual and collective has, has different um, drivers to what is able to be made explicit. Um, PCK is knowledge development as opposed to <coughs> propositional attainment. That's a big deal. That's a really big deal. And so in the end, um, and someone said this the other day, I think it might have been Aaron in our group, PCK has got a lot to say about our models or views of teaching professional learning and development. And what Sean was saying before, how do these things move? How do we develop expertise? Has got a lot to say about how PCK might fit into that. So I think they're big deal questions and issues. We've sort of answered the questions, but there's two things at the heart of it I want you to remember. The directive that we have had as researchers working on this is dramatically different to what teachers want. Dramatically different. And always, for us, we would keep coming back and saying, so we might think we're doing some really cool work and we really enjoy it and it looks good, but so what if it doesn't actually impact teachers, if it doesn't help them in some way do something? So in the end, I think our argument would be, I'm looking for knots from the team, I think our argument would be that if PCK is worth it, teachers go, that's a really cool idea. That's how I see it. I become a better, more capable, more expert teacher in my subject field. And that's my vision for development. And if PCK is a way of thinking about and doing that, then PCK really does serve a purpose. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you.